I've built the same app using React and the Web Components API. So let's take a look at how they compare. So let's first of all take a look at what I've actually built. So as you can see, there are buttons here, which take a click value. So they count how often you click them. And the sum of how often you clicked all the buttons uh, appears on top. And they display a random Pokemon whenever you reload, which is fetched from the Pokemon API. So now let's head into the React code and take a look at how it works. So as you can see, this is our app. It takes a count, that's basically the sum of all um, button clicks, not just for one, but for all of them. And here we see the count, the title React to differentiate the suit sides. And yeah, every button basically has an on-click prop to be able to pass clicks from the outside and the title that would appear when you hover on them. So here it says button two, and for our Vite app, it of course also says button two here. If we now take a look inside our button, then we're gonna see we have two states, a value state, so how often you clicked on that specific button, and the Pokemon name, which is fetched in the beginning, to then be displayed in the button. As you can see, the default value is no Pokemon. You could of course also leave this empty, which most often would of course make more sense. As you can see, we run the use effect only once because the dependency array is empty, and that fetches our Pokemon name asynchronously and then sets uh, the Pokemon name to that Pokemon's name that was fetched. As you can see, we just um, get a random ID using math the random, then just do the fetch with that random ID, get our data, and from the data we use the name. So as you can see, the display is also quite simple. We use a span to be able to um, have that hover title. Then we have a div that does the on-click logic and also has some styling applied to it, which is stored in another file. Then here we display our children, our value is stored in a formatted string, just so we have a space behind here. And then we also have uh, our styled button text, which contains the Pokemon name. If we now just went ahead and uh, took a look at our styling, then you can see it's just a normal CSS file with normal class names. So button wrapper, button text, a hover animation, and all that stuff. Quite a simple React component, basically. So now let's take a look at how I implemented this using Web Component. So first of all, let's head to the index file. Here you can see, okay, I've got this uh, sum of all clicks again, got the h1 with web components. And uh, the sum I actually don't handle using um, web components directly. So yeah, basically it's just an on click that is attached to all my um, components that are in this case called my dash button. And that on click will just increase a global sum object and set the inner text of this h2 that contains the sum to the current value. So basically when I click this button, then uh, the sum value increases, and when I click the other button, the sum value increases as well. And it will immediately be put into the inner text of this h2 right here. So now let's take a look at how we actually work with this my button component. Well, for that, we will need to head into the myButton.js file, which I import as this script right here. And that myButton.js file basically, uh, first of all, creates a template object, which is new for web components. So that's basically an object that isn't directly rendered by the browser, but only if you use it as a web component. So we create a template object and it's HTML is basically a style tag so that we can use CSS and the span you saw before in React. The main difference is um, we are not using something like children, but a slot tag. And a slot tag is basically um, the position where all your children of the tag you create will be put into. So if we just head back to our index.html, then we should see that uh, here we've got this click me text which is basically a child of our element, and that will be put where our slot element is. So this would be replaced by click me. And if we just head back to our browser, then we see that works. It says click me. Well, web components actually use classes. So they are really similar to um, the old school class-based React components. And yeah, we're gonna take a look at how I implemented these. You can of course implement them in many different ways because they are even less opinionated than React but I think this is quite a good comparison to React because I tried to stay really similar to um, React components based on classes. First of all, we got a global element. The element is basically a copy of um, this template right here, which we're gonna um, use for rendering. And then our state is basically just one big object, which we're gonna need to manipulate using the spread operator, but um, this makes it easier to um, handle re-rendering so that we don't have to create a class for set value and for set Pokemon name, but only one for set state. But before we get into that, we're gonna look at the constructor. So uh, the constructor is actually not what would happen in a use effect because a use effect runs when the component mounts and the constructor is to initialize the component. So we'll get to the use effect a bit later. But what you need to know about the constructor is we need to run super to basically get all the normal HTML and web component functionality and then we can attach this shadow. This shadow is basically um, just a way to allow or disallow 
um, manipulation of the component using JavaScript. So we left it open because that brings us closer to React because in React you can also kind of manipulate other components using JavaScript. You really shouldn't most of the time, but you could. And then we just run the render element function that I've written. So our render element function basically um, fills in our element with a copy of the template. I decided to copy the template just so I don't accidentally overwrite anything that I didn't want to overwrite. And yeah, then we just fill in the text that we want. So this is basically how filling in state works. So we just set the inner text of um, elements. Normally you would of course uh, choose better selectors than just um, the type of tag. So this is a B tag and a P tag, which isn't the most secure, but yeah, this was the fastest and most best efficient way of uh, showing this to you. And yeah, we're basically saying, okay, the inner text of this B tag is our value and the inner text of our P tag is our state. And as you can see, here's a button text. This would be um, filled with the state uh, the Pokemon name. And this is our B tag, which would then be filled with our um, amount of clicks, so our value. And then after we've filled in all the text, we can actually attach our attributes. For this, we actually also get some tools. First of all, this dot has attribute title and um, this that has attribute basically checks if you've attached any um, attributes to your custom component. So here, the my button component contains a title. Again, this is the hover text. And we first of all, um, always set it, but just to make sure, we will need to check if um, it actually has the attribute title. And if it does, then we'll um, basically just set it as a title for our span. So we'll basically move it down the chain so that we can have it at exactly the component inside the web component that we want. Then um, the next thing we can do is actually set an on click event on our div because somewhere we will need the click functionality and we'll just say, okay, when the div is clicked, then we'll set our state to this.state and a value that is increased by one. You now might uh, wonder if we compare it to React again. Here we actually also run props.click. Um, where does it happen in our component? Well. That's something that web components already do for you. So you don't need to attach your on click to any of your specified elements. It will just be attached to the web component itself. So if we just head here and look at this, the on click doesn't need to be read. So our my button component basically handles the on click automatically. If we click on anything in the my button component, then this function will run and increase the global sum, basically. We've now attached all our attributes, so the title and the onclick, and now we can basically render it already. So um, this step is just for cleanup. So if I've already rendered the component and want to re-render it, then I will basically go ahead and remove the inner HTML of the shadow root. The shadow root is basically um, the root of our shadow DOM, which basically allows us to um, have a whole separate component that's separate from all the other CSS and stuff, inside our app. So every bit of styling for the whole app will not apply to this shadow root. But that's the reason why we added the style tags, just to make sure that um, we can still style stuff. So yeah, that's why this style tag up here exists. And then after we've cleaned up our shadow root, so basically every, everything is removed that is part of our, um, that was part of our component, we will just go ahead and say, okay, we want to append this dot element. So basically the element we've been working with all the time, the template that got the inner text and the attributes. And that's basically how we would have now configured our class. There's one thing missing, which is that um, we of course also need this uh, use effect that we had in our button JSX right here, which runs the async function. And for that, we actually have something really similar to um, React class components as well, which is these, um, helper methods basically. So connected callback is a reserved method basically. And that method will always run as soon as the component mounts. So this runs once and that's exactly what we need because it's basically the exact same as a use effect with an empty dependency, right? And here we just do the same stuff. So an async function that does this fetch and says, okay, this dot set state, keep all of the state except for the Pokemon name and set it to Pokemon that name. We will need to look at our set state. So our set state says this dot state is new state. So good so far. And then it just runs the render element function again. And this is basically the case so that we can always have the newest um, state value. So um, as soon as I update the state, the render element function will run again and we will um, basically see the new values again. So every time I click on here, the button is re-rendered completely and yeah, it basically stays up to date this way. And now we just need to do one thing because as soon as we have completely defined our class, in this case, my button, we can go ahead and say custom elements.define, give it a key at my button. And this key will, first of all, need to have a dash in it. And second of all, it will basically be how you would address it inside of your HTML. So if I would rename this into your button, for example, and head back to the index.html, then we can see 
Oops, I didn't change the closing text, I'm sorry. And now we basically have the same thing again, but with a different name. Okay, so I hope that this was kind of helpful for you to better differentiate between React and web components. And if you now are interested in even more comparisons, like maybe you want to have your React be faster, then maybe you should check out this video where I'll compare React to Preact, which is a faster alternative to React. So, see you there.